Now to an extremely rare look inside Prince Charles's country estate. We have been granted special access to Highgrove Gardens. Mm, the future king purchased Highgrove in 1980 and that is when he began an extraordinary transformation of the property. Seven News Europe Bureau Chief Hugh Whitfeld was invited inside the gates and he joins us. Hugh, what was it like? Good morning. It is special. It's also a pretty surprising place as well. Charles has been banging on about the environment for decades and this is proof that he practices what he preaches. We are a long way from the pomp, pageantry and palaces of London. Welcome to Prince Charles's private estate, Highgrove. Over 15 rambling acres, it's a glimpse not just into the private lives of the royals, but Charles himself. Our own Rob Jobson has quite literally written the book on the future king. The fact is, it is his garden, it's his reflection upon his personality. By his royal highness's own admission, eclectic and slightly eccentric. Most of these things here look to be gifts or artefacts that have been given to him, but instead of them just being stashed away somewhere um, quietly, you know, he's made a use of it, made it into this sort of rather interesting wall. At times, whimsical, overflowing with colour, slightly chaotic, before perfect order is restored. All organic and often very English. Although once William and Harry were caught riding go-karts across these meadows and this was their treehouse. It is a deeply personal space. How unique is Highgrove oh. as a garden? I mean, I have to say it's an iconic garden of the uh, 21st century. Dr. Deb's Sorry, Good Enough sorry. leads a team of 11 gardeners, but it's Charles who's in charge. He is directing and saying this is what he wants, this is how he wants it laid out. So people are coming to see definitely his garden. It's not my garden, it's not my team's garden, it's where it's his Royal Highness's garden. So when we talk about organic, what does that actually mean, <laughs> practically? It's this, it's this right here, it's the soil, look at that. I mean, we've just got the most wonderful soil here and it grows everything here and, uh, you know, yes, there might be a few weeds and things like that, but this produces all the veg and the fruit for uh, their Royal Highnesses. 40,000 people visit every year. The admission fee has so far raised more than 13 million dollars for the Prince's charities. Pretty much all the structure and everything you see here is a reflection upon him, his passion for gardening and what he's trying to, you know, to do with a, in a small way here is what he's hoping that we achieve I think in the wider world. Now because this is very much Charles's home you can't just turn up, walk in and have a, a look about. You do need to book if you want to go to Highgrove uh, and you need to go on one of their official tours. You can't just wander about as much as we would all love to. And of course when you pay to go in it goes very much to a good cause. They've raised millions of dollars for the Prince's charities over the last 25 years that the garden has been open to the public and of course we hope that Charles will keep swinging open the doors to let people come and have a look. A little glimpse into his life and his family's life as well with the expectation that the grandkids, of course, will be playing in that treehouse too. Mm, I bet they do. Uh, that was lovely. Thank yeah. you. Really enjoyed that. Mm. What a beautiful garden. What a lucky, lucky experience.